after the fact. A couple of churches, pretty good, good things. Uh, one of them was horrible. It was so loud that honestly my head I thought was going to split. I don't know how in the world you get any more sound in a, a room. But the place was packed. Not the church wasn't very old. I think less than uh, two months growing by leaps and bounds. The night that I was there, I think there was something over 150. Preaching was good. I analyzed it and I figured and looked at it and decided I couldn't go there probably for a number of reasons, but one, because my head couldn't take it. Just too loud and I was splitting. But people seemed to like it. They wouldn't be doing it. People were coming. More coming every week. Wonder why they came. I got the idea from the way that he talked because people ask them. I thought about that a little bit. I thought that makes sense. They didn't just come. They all were asking people to come. They're keeping track of, of the changes and the new people that come every week. It's bigger and bigger. We talked about how do you do church. When I was a young preacher, as far as I can remember, I don't know if I can remember that far back, but back some time ago, a long time ago, matter of fact, some old preacher gave me some advice. I don't know whether he'd never heard me preach, but he was thinking about doing church again. I don't talk about that. But he made some sense in this. He said, a big problem, you're going to fight all of your ministry or all of your life, however he said it, is the ho-hum factory, factor. The ho-hum factor. Well, it didn't take me long to figure that out. Sometimes going to church is pretty boring. Sometimes some folks sit and check their watches and think, I wonder how much longer I've heard this before and I've got this to do and there's a ball game going to take place in a little bit and so on. But the ho home factor, uh, what the, I thought about that, what in the world is that? Then I remembered an event, preacher Bysville, where my membership was way back when, found out in Bowdoin there was a an empty building out there, a very nice building the Methodists had had, and you could have it in good shape, but they'd given it up. So he thought we might get a congregation going out there. So the first trip we went out to Bowdoin, and well, I gotta make a little excuse here. I'd been working hard and long, and I'm talking about the ho-hum factor now. So I heard something sounded like my name way off far someplace. Brother Powers, Brother Powers, Brother Powers. Somebody shook my shoulder and says, I think they want you to have the closing prayer. So they called me on me for the closing prayer and I was sound asleep. I looked up and everybody's standing up looking at me and I'm sitting there asleep. Uh, I think that's the ho-hum factor. Why ever? You know, we try to make excuses for it. But uh, I want to ask a question, feel free to answer. Has anyone here ever gone to church and be bored? Yes. You going to answer or not? I said yes. Yes? Is there anybody who has never had the experience of being bored at church. That's an easier way. If you will stand up, I want to shake your hand. 
and then pray for you for lying. Uh, it happens far too often, I fear. We can't wait, we check this. I, I can tell people do this. And they're doing this. They got their phones out. But th th they thank God for uh, phones you can carry around now and you can get on there and not just talk on the telephone, but you can get on there and you get some inter something interesting to read. So people sitting back here acting like, you know, where. Anyway, the ho hum factor needs to be dealt with. I don't know if we can ever get rid of it, but we, it needs to be dealt with. What should we be doing anyway? Well, one thing is this. Once upon a time, Jesus was talking to the woman of Samaria, Jacob's well, and she asked him a question, said, sir, our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say Jerusalem is a place where you ought to worship. And he said, woman, well, believe me, the, neither in this mountain or yet at Jerusalem, so on and so forth. He went on to say, God seeks people, men, mankind, generic. God seeks people to worship him in spirit and in truth. I think one of the most important bits of scripture in the book I think often and talk to God often about doing something for me or somebody else, usually for somebody else. I try to be conscious of other people's needs. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. I constantly am very conscious, have been for years, of being a blessing to other people. Look for opportunities to give attention, give love, give information, recognize what is needed and, and give it. Oh, Jesus said something like, let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works or your good deeds and glorify the Father in heaven. I take that seriously. And uh, it's something that is very conscious. I have a grandson that told me every night when he goes to bed, he gets down on his knees and he prays. A lot of people do that. I do that. He says, but I get down, I slide my phone way back under the bed. So in the morning, I got to get up and get on my knees in order to get it. Davey, that's great. He does that to start the day off right I'm going to talk to God the first thing and I got to get on my knees for get my phone <laughs> I got to get on my knees to get it so I remember to start the day off by talking to God I thought that was pretty good but we need to live life on purpose ho-hum factor so many other things come about because there is no planning or the planning is selfish. But we do need to decide Elma, every day, how am I going to live this day? And it starts with God. It needs to start with God. Every day is full of opportunities. Every day is full of danger. I often find, think about this, how often I find myself doing something that's kind of surprising. I never imagined I would be here or in, in this circumstance or doing this. Life is full of challenges. Life is full of differences. But we need to live life on purpose. And we do that by taking our time, going to the Word, trying to remember this, that God has given us through the Scripture everything that pertains to life and godliness. Every day you live, you are dealing with life every day. 
every day. God grants us blessings. We need to allow God to guide us every day. God, not this. Please keep help so and so win the game today. Or got to check the news today and see how bad things are and so I can worry about that a little bit. Try to figure out when the world's going to end and think about that and on and on it goes. God, take this from Jesus. It was a time when in all likelihood, if it not the greatest, it was next to it. Jesus was down on his face and he was crying out loud. The Bible says with strong crying and tears, he was calling out to God. And he's saying, God, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. I don't want this to happen. I don't want to go through this, but I do want to do your will. So he said something that we ought to say over and over every day, many times every day. Not as I will, dear Father, but as you will. Guide me today, Father, where you want me to go. Help me to bless the people you put in my life. Help me to look for opportunities to preach the gospel, to encourage others, to serve others. See, that's the way you get happy. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. If you leave, live a life that's centered around what rings your bell, you're going to be a miserable soul. You need to get you out of the way and allow God to get in the way and guide your way. Anyway, what's important? How do we do church? We've got to deal with the, with the ho-hum factor. Uh, I have, for example, somebody asked me to do the communion today. So what am I going to do? I'll tell you the best thing to do is, in my opinion, and you could figure it out it was my opinion. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. You take the cup, that represents the blood. You take the bread, that represents the body that's broken for me. I need to remember that. And I can't improve a whole lot on that, except God help me to remember what you went through. How horrible that body was torn up to pay for my horrible sins. Will it hurt me to think that way every week? At least take some time every week and think that here's the Son of God saying, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, but thy will. Every day of our life ought to be lived like that with the knowledge and the, the awareness and the praying, God, not what you want today, not what I want today, but what do you want? Lead me where you want me to go. Help me to do what you want me to do. How do we do church? How do we do church? I think that the most, thing, most important thing that takes place when we assemble is probably praising God. How do we praise God anyway? Help me with that, will you? What do we do to praise God? If I say praise God, does that count? Help me. I think it does, don't you? God, we praise your name. When we sing, what do we do? Well, I can sing about him and should. 
The Bible says to do that, so we do that. But it seems to me that it doesn't, doesn't get any better than saying or singing directly to God and do it the best we can. Praise God. Sing praises to his name. Concentrate on that. And I'll guarantee you this. Satan's going to see that it's not easy. I want to ask you a question. I don't want you to answer it. I just want you to think about it. We communed a while ago. What was supposed to be happening? You're supposed to think about you take the bread, this represents the body that was broken for me. So I think about that, right? That's hard to do that. Do you know why? Because the devil recognized how important it is. He will do everything possible to get your mind someplace else. If you commune by concentrating, thinking about the body that was broken, the blood that was shed, you're going to have a hard time because Satan is trying to get your mind someplace else. Isn't that right? It is. We have to really work at it. Kids going to decide to, to carry on. Somebody's liable to faint and fall in and have to be holed out. He's going to do all kinds of stuff. That's a fact. Simply you say, we've got to work at it. Say this, it's worth it. It's worth the effort. I don't know about where this experience comes from or the expression comes from, how you do church. Well, we are the church. How do we do worship? There's another thing that I think is very vital, very, very precious, awfully important in our pleasing God. The Apostle John said I was in, in, in the first verse in Revelation he said this this is important, so important not news to you, but you're going to have to really work hard to practice it. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. The Lord's Day is the first day of the week when Jesus was resurrected. He said, I was in the Spirit. You worship God in spirit and in truth. You're not worshiping God unless you're worshiping in spirit. Not accepted, not properly, unless truth is invited, in spirit and in truth. That should be probably the most important thing you do any day of the week or any time in your life. You're in the spirit. That's how you have to deal with God in spirit and truth. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. We condemn and say that you know, God has taken the Old Testament out of the way and doing, has done that. We're delivered from that. But there's the Lord's day, the day Jesus was resurrected. And John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I think it'll be helpful if we all make, first of all, plans to be in the spirit on the Lord's day, whatever it takes, when you go to bed and when you get up and what you do when you get up and you don't allow Satan to get uh, into a fuss with your wife or the kids or all kind of things. My wife was really good about that. 
We have five kids. She would get one ready, set them down on the couch, and they don't need to get up. That's the oldest one. Then the next one sits down, and the oldest one takes care of the one that's already down. So she line all four of them up. The old one takes care of, take care. They didn't fuss and fight. So there, there's peace about that. Everybody knew what was going on. Everybody's okay with it. It's just a matter of planning to do what is most important. On the Lord's day, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Satan gives us all kinds of things to do. All kinds of things. But give the Lord's day to the Lord. I have several difficulties that uh, I haven't always had in my life. But one is this. For years and years and years, what are you going to do after you have get done with dinner? Who am I going to visit? That somebody has to drive me now. Uh, I could probably do it, but it might be dangerous. <laughs> they, they, nobody wants me to. Uh, back a couple, three or four or five years ago, I don't remember which, I drove the car, I think I drove it up here. And the kids all frown on that, tell me how wrong it is. They convinced me. I shouldn't do that. So I have to depend on somebody to take me to visit and spend all of the Lord's day on the Lord, with the Lord. Ah, that's enough. I sit here and thinking about my preaching. I've thought about uh, so eager, I think it's so good. I think it's so, so, so wonderful and good. But I got to thinking, you used to teach people in college, the boys, to preach to people, not preach sermons. And uh, sometimes I think it's probably good. I hope you think it's the same thing, I don't know. Uh, just to talk, not preach. Uh, how many of you like to be preached to Which I guess it's not very popular. I expected that. Put me on the list. Me too. Me too. Gracious and glorious Father, we come to worship today. So much has been good and wonderful. I've been been blessed blessed by the singing and communing, praying. I've been blessed. I hope I'm better because of it. I hope my week will be better because of the beginning, because of today. <sighs> Holy Father, help us to be all we can be for you. Help us to be very conscious and try to live for you. Help us not to seek glory, but seek to give the glory that is due you. For everything that's good and perfect and right comes from you. You are our hope. You are our strength. You are our Savior. May we be eager to be in your presence. And may we, in some small way, bring honor and glory to you. Not when we come together to worship, but when we begin every day. May we strive to worship and please you. The Bible says, day by day, 
I hear your voice. Day by day, I call on you. Be with us, Lord. Bless us even this day. And Father, take care, comfort, and strength. And care for Sarah and the girls. Bless them as you alone can as they deal with the passing of their Sarah's husband and the kids, Father. We thank you for what he has meant to us. And look forward to when that time comes that we can sit down again together because of Christ in his most precious name. Amen. There's some, here someplace, some newsletters to hand out. Would somebody pass those out as we leave? Are they here or someplace else? Okay. I got a real good sermon I want to preach next Sunday. I planned it last Sunday and the Sunday before that. You come, you never know when you might have a good lesson. You wouldn't want to miss it. <laughs>